Good morning, everybody. I'm going to share with you uh, a couple of things that I pulled from this faith study series on uh, wisdom. And as I thought about that, you know, title of this lesson, one was bite your tongue and the other one was wise up. And I thought about that because they say it's better to keep your mouth closed and let people think you're a fool than open your mouth and remove all doubt. And when I thought about that, I said, we can all recall the time that we opened our mouth and gave our opinion on something that we really didn't know about because we didn't wait till the whole matter was told to us before we commented, just to prove in the end that we were wrong. The book of James gives us some timely lessons that we can all benefit from because we all have had times that we had or we should have bitten our tongue and kept our mouth closed. Uh, what are you saying? Well, sometimes you just got to hold your peace. Sometimes you just got to hold back. And hold back from saying something that doesn't need to be said. Sometimes you're in a conflict. You may have a conflict with a co-worker. You may have a misunderstanding with your supervisor. You may have a disagreement with a loved one, a friend, a neighbor, and even, yes, a church member. Uh, you may be disappointed in a child's behavior because of a teacher's report. But sometimes we say some things and that we can't take it back because then we regret what we said. Uh, in James chapter 1, verse 19, he says what? Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And what that tells me is the lack of godly wisdom is demonstrated how we can't discipline or control our tongue. And James tells us about that. You know, he compares that tongue to, it's so small, but it can start a world of fire. It said it compares it to a bit that you put in a horse's mouth. You put a small bit in a big old horse's mouth to guide them, in other words, which way they need to go. You put a little rudder in a uh, giant ship to be able to guide that ship in which way it needs to go in the water. He said, but that tongue, as small as it is in the human body, nobody can control. One writer said it like this. He said, the tongue is seen as one of the most deadliest weapons that man possesses. It's not his physical strength. It's not his intellectual ability. He said, it's his tongue. And so this can occur when? When our perspective of what I think or my position, or what I think sh things should or shouldn't be, goes contrary to what you think things should or shouldn't be. And one of the reasons being is why I want to state my position before you've stated yours. And if what we have to say, it doesn't really matter what the other person has to say. I want to say what I want to say. And so um, Ecclesiastes 3.7b says, there's a time to speak and a time to keep silent. We need to take that to heart. He said, and you've heard the saying, less is more, less is more. The less you say, the more beneficial it is to you instead of saying so much. Uh, the Good News Translation says it like this in Proverbs 10, 19. He says, the more you talk, the more likely you are to sin. If you are wise, though, you'll keep quiet. So when you're confronted with those conflicts, regardless of who it's with, sometimes ask yourself, is what I'm going to say going to build somebody up or is it going to tear them down? Because we know if our words intent to hurt somebody and tear them down. So just ask yourself that because that's what wisdom would teach you. And so do I need to even open my mouth and say really how I really feel? The tongue has been known to inflict fights, ruin friendship, cause church split, wreck homes, lose jobs, and even start wars between nations. But if we look at what's happening in our culture just today, Look at, we have notable sports writers, uh, news reporters, radio announcers. They've all lost their jobs. Why? Because they didn't learn to discipline their mouth. And what they did, they said some things that were culturally offensive in nature and caused them to lose their job. Yeah, they came back and uh, apologized after the fact. But you know, once those words go out of your mouth, I can't pull them back in. And so that's what happened. I remember we were kids, you know, my brother used to uh, make traps to catch birds. You know, I think all boys back at that time, they always thought it was something to catch a bird in a trap. Once that bird was trapped, he couldn't, he couldn't get out. And so it's kind of like, you know, the Bible said we are snared by the words of our mouth. Those words that are coming out of our mouth, I can't get out and, and bring them back. And so they're out there. And so what, what uh, James 3.17, he begins to tell us, some things that we need to know about wisdom according to the word of God. He said the first thing is that this wisdom is first pure. In other words, the wisdom that he's talking about, this wisdom pleases God. He said that wisdom is peaceable. That means that wisdom is set forth to ease conflict. Are you trying to ease conflict or are you trying to spar conflict? 
He said that wisdom is gentle. In other words, that wisdom is considerate of others. Think about others' feelings. He said this wisdom from above, he says, easy to be entreated. In other words, it's easy to receive the opinion of others and not just my own opinion or my own view. In other words, sometimes I have to be submissive. He says, full of mercy. In other words, it's the godly favor that God has given us through wisdom. And he said, it's full of good fruits. He said, that's the benefits of just living with godly wisdom. He said that it's also without partiality. In other words, it doesn't show any favoritism. And he said, godly wisdom is without hypocrisy. In other words, it's not doing anything fake just to get what I want. You know, we can shake and fake and say some things just to get what we want. He said, but that's not godly wisdom. Um... St. Francis, I always think about what he said. St. Francis, he was an Italian Catholic priest, but I always liked this saying that he wrote. He said, we should seek first to understand rather than being understood. In other words, don't always have a me first attitude. You know, I got to get my dibs in first. You know, when we were kids and we were choosing teams to play ball. Everybody want to get their dibs in first because why? You want the best of the best. And so sometimes we can be like that even as adults. Uh, it's like watching a game show, Family Feud. I love to watch Family Feud. And, you know, when the round first start and the two people are there, you know, before Steve Harvey can finish the question, somebody hit the buzzer right quick. And they hadn't even heard the, the full uh, statement that he was trying to make, only to find that they were wrong. And then uh, we should never, it's not that we should never speak out or make our opinions known, but we need to be able to know that uh, Proverbs 15, 23 say, A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season, how good it is. You know, it's good to hear a word, word spoken at just the right time. It said just what you need to ease the calm. Uh, because why? So many people get in conflict, and they discuss because they have varying viewpoints and what have you. But he said that word is spoken in due season. It's a good word. But you know what? We all sin, and we all come short of God's glory. And so when you know that you have done some things or said some things that were out of turn or what have you, you didn't discipline your tongue, repent. Ask God genuinely to forgive you and seek to use the godly wisdom of the Holy Spirit to be able to help you to be able to govern that tongue. Uh, help you because I think about the fact that the tongue should be a source of blessing and a source of healing. When we speak words, we want those words to be true for healing and to uplift somebody. Uh, the opening prayer I heard in services by the preacher and sometime by speakers. I think this should be an opening prayer for every day of our lives. Psalms 1914. I know this is what our pastors always say. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let's all wise up. Okay. Have a blessed day. Amen.